Hello everyone. In chapter three, we're going to be talking about summary measures. These are measurements which take a huge set of information and they attempt to come up with an output or a number that summarizes something about that data set as a whole. A common one that you will use is a measure of central location. And that is fancy terminology for what most everybody will refer to as the average. It is an attempt to find a typical value that is the center point in all of the observable data points you have within that set. There are three that are very commonly used, the mean, the median, and the mode. We don't call this measures of average though because there are some measurements where the location that you are trying to find is not the middle, is not central, and one of those would be percentile. Percentile finds where one specific point within all the data that you have sits relative to all of the other data points that you have in that sample. For example, if a student goes and they get a 92nd percentile on their GMAT examination, the Graduate of Management Admission Test, that means that they did better than 92% of the other test takers. So while this isn't a measure of central location, a measure of average is still a measure of location. Where within this overall set of information does this very specific point lie? The arithmetic mean is used all the time as the average. People say this was the average of that and this is the measurement that is most commonly used to get there. It is just adding up as it says right here, all of the observations that you have, all of the individual data points that you have, and then dividing by the number of observations that you have, the size of your sample. And doing so will give you, with a little bit of arithmetic, a measure of central location, a measure of average of your entire data set. This can be referred to in two different ways. In statistics, uh, one is as mu, this Greek letter right here that looks like a hybrid of an M and a U. That is the arithmetic mean of the population as a whole. So if you are looking for the average income of all 360 million whatever Americans that exist out there and you had that information for every single one of them, that is the average of the population. And it would be represented as mu and it would be referred to as a parameter, a known average of the entire set. Well, information on that scale is not cost efficient or even really possible to get for a whole bunch of things. So what do statisticians do? They sample. They take a smaller number of people that's supposed to represent the population as a whole and they find out information about them. So if you're trying to find the information about the average income of all the people that lived in the Mohawk Valley, it's still probably too many people to pull but you can pull a thousand of them. And if your thousand of them is, you know, properly set up, you have the right amount of people of different gender, background, income, etc., up in your sample, then it will represent the population. You find it the same exact way. Take the thousand returns that you get, add them all together and divide by a thousand. And this is going to give you your sample mean. Only difference now is that using the same formula over here, you don't denote it with mu, you denote it as X bar. That way people who are using this information know that what you have isn't a parameter. Information about the population as a whole is in fact a statistic. Information about the sample that you are observing. There is a problem with the arithmetic mean, even though it is the most common measure of average, and that is it is extremely prone to being distorted, for the lack of a better term, by outliers. You will have points in your information set to end up making your mean not represent what is truly the average, the center of all of your information because there are one or two points in there that are just not in line with everything else that you have. For example, going back to my median income of Bohawk Valley, uh, imagine if LeBron James and Jeff Bezos came and they moved to the Mohawk Valley you could take a poll of a thousand people, but just those two gentlemen in that poll making the money that they do would cause that arithmetic mean average to be so much higher than is representative of the sample. They are outliers. And that's why you don't hear the term term median or sorry, mean income, you hear the term median income. Because the median 
being less prone to outliers is a better representation of what people in this area make on average. Now, how do you find the median? It's a pretty simple process. What I do, if I'm doing it by hand, is I order all of the numbers in a row, highest, so there's our lowest to highest, and then get rid of the lowest point, get rid of the highest point. So I get rid of the one and nine, get rid of the next lowest point, this first three, and the next highest point, this eight, and I just keep going all the way in like that until I am done slashing off spots and I find the middle. And if you have an odd number of data points in your sample, the middle will stand by itself. So for this first set we have right here, using that process, first and last, first and last, first and last, you get left with six as your median in the middle. If you have an even number, it doesn't work quite as nice. You can still use the same process, cross off the lowest number, cross off the highest number, next lowest, next highest, but you're gonna arrive in the middle where there are two numbers that are together. And if that's the case, what do you do? Well, then you find the arithmetic mean of just those two numbers that are left in the middle. So for this one, we have four and five left, add them together, you get nine, divide by two, the number that are left in the middle, and you come up with a median of four and a half. So if you know that you are going to have huge outliers in your sample, you may wanna get rid of them from the sample period because you know they're gonna mess up your, your information, or if you are going to leave them in there because they you know, are part of the, the sample that you have to work with, you may be better off using the median instead of the arithmetic mean. For the, the income that I've been talking about, that is a quantitative variable. It can be measured in numbers. Well, there are some things where you're gonna want information about that aren't me measured in numbers. Something silly, but if you wanted to know what everybody's favorite flavor of Starburst is, that's not measured in numbers. That is a quality, or if you will, a qualitative or categorical variable. And if that is the case, well, you can't math it out and find the number. Your best bet in that case is just to count up how many of the different, um, different observations you have for each qualitative variable and figure out which one is the most common because that is the mode. So if you went through and you took a poll of a thousand people what their favorite Starburst flavor was and cherry was the highest response, cherry would be unimodal average for that group of information. So this is what you have to do to express average or, or most common uh, for a qualitative set of information. But it does definitely have its uses with numbers too. We'll say hypothetically in this situation, that a professor was sitting there and they gave a test to 19 students. Nine of those students get 100. There's one student that gets a 50. And then the other nine students, they don't do the test at all and they get a zero. Well, with that sample set, nine zeros, 150, nine one hundreds, both the mean and the median would be 50 for both of those. Is that represent, representative of the actual average of the sample set? And my answer to that is no. Um, 50 would be a failing grade. Somebody looking at that would look at it and say, okay, this test must have been way too hard because the average was 50. Well, that's not true. I mean, eight out of the people that actually, or nine out of the 10 people that actually took the test got 100 on it. It might be very easy. It's just the fact that all of those zeros in the information are messing up your measure of central location. In that case, you're probably better off saying, okay, out of the 19 test takers, there was nine zeros. There was 900s, you have a bimodal average in this case. Uh, and for that, you would have better information to work with. You would know that for the people that are actually taking the test, they're doing incredibly well on it. But unfortunately, you're having a hard time making people take the test. So the mode is a very good way to quantify something if it can't be expressed in numbers, or if it can, if you have extremes on both ends of the possible outcomes of your information, um, because it displays information that people using it are going to get a better idea of what is really representative of the sample they're working with.